Hey, here's a ride that never ends. When Interactive is not releasing Ready or Not. Again, that's right. For those of you that don't know, Ready or Not is delaying its beta once again. This comes from another newsletter that just came the other day. We will go through it just to see what excuse they, you know, are going to come up with and why they can't update the supporter edition. Like the amount of developers that have told me that this one wasn't going to get delayed is ridiculous here i was thinking oh well team 17 is gonna kick their ass right wrong void interactive is gonna pull a void interactive and i'm honestly not surprised by this point but hey i'll at least give them credit because this time around they didn't wait until like the ass end of freaking june to tell us that it was gonna be delayed or beginning of july well that would have been a tragedy it's better for them to get it off their chest now than day of or day after but at the same time that's just what ready or not is known for it's stupid name like is this game ever coming out or is it just gonna keep getting delayed into non existence but do right a delayed game is always good don't give me that bullshit when we know that games like cyberpunk were delayed into high heaven and they still came out like shit don't get me started on dead matter jesus fuck. that's just what it feels like right now like it just feels like even if the game does come out it's probably gonna be a broken ass game god i don't want it to be but that's what it feels like why is it so goddamn hard for somebody to make a swap for a clone. It's like every game that I run into that tries to do that just ends up fucking it up. We're never coming out with it. Like I could honestly care less about this update that they just released. Like I just want a fucking update to the supporter edition. Is that so goddamn hard? The last time that it was fucking updated was February of last year. Oh yeah. If you're someone that's looking into buying the supporter edition, don't. Please just don't. Don't buy it. It's not worth it. They don't update it. They're gonna try and feed you some bullshit like, Oh, we're perfectionists. We're trying to get everything right. Yeah, perfectionists, I can't get the date right. I'm just fucking tired, man. I've been following this game for way too fucking long. And I don't know, man. I just, I want to believe that these developers are actually good at what they're doing. But the amount of people that have left and the amount of times that they've delayed it, it's just, it doesn't look good. I'll tell you that. All right, well, that was my rant, I guess. Uh, it's probably gonna fall on deaf ears like always, but at least people know how I feel. It's something that's likely gonna get forgotten, but I feel like it's something that I needed to say. Just to get it off my chest. All right, so let's get into the update. What's up, everybody? Dread back at it again with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Ready or Not because there is unfortunate news that happened just the other day. It admittedly broke me, but I pulled myself together today so that we can get through this update together. The game is unfortunately getting delayed again. Yes, that's right. Again. It's not the first time that this game has been delayed, and I have a feeling that it's not going to be the last. But nevertheless, we still have an update to get through. So, there are two parts to this update. There is the reasoning as to why the beta was delayed and a sneak peek at what's to come. So, we're going to start with the reasoning and then we're gonna get into that so here it goes hey everyone today we're gonna be sharing with you an update on the state of play for ready or not we all know you're eager for information so let's bridge and clear our way through today's news beta access date changes having been diligently reviewing the current status of ready or not the team has made the decision to push back the beta access what does this mean for you beta access for ready or not will take place later in the year but later than originally planned we know this will be disappointing for you to read you don't even know the half of it or maybe you do but we will continue to open and update you with more information as soon as we can why the delay? Moving back a date, whether it's beta access, early access, or full launch, is never an easy decision. But we know it's the correct one to make. Everyone at Void Interactive and Team 17 wants to give you an amazing, unique experience with Ready or Not. And we don't want to compromise that vision by sharing sooner than it's ready. We owe it to both the game and you, our awesome community. Let's get on the same page. What is beta access? Beta access for Ready or Not is a snapshot of the core gameplay loop. In this loop, you'll get a peek through the window and a glimpse at the direction that we want to take Ready or Not. We know this will spark constructive feedback from our core fans. Oh boy, you don't even know. And it's you, the community we want to hear from. Beta access has always been exclusive to anyone who purchased Ready or Not through the Void Interactive site. This will not change. What happens after beta access? For the weeks and months following beta access, we'll be taking valuable constructive feedback, analyzing the data and weaving our learnings into our future production plans. At this stage, we'll be evaluating what needs to be done, and then we'll be able to deliver on the next stage of our journey, Steam Early Access. It's worth noting that there's a lot to do in between. Beta access and early access, we're aware that Ready or Not's community is more accepting of seeing rougher versions of the game. Early access will open us up to a wider fan base, and we must prepare to deliver to a broader audience without compromising our core fan expectations. So what can I expect when Ready or Not launches into early access? Current plans for Ready or Not to launch into early access with the following, a selection of co-op single player levels, a range of authentic weapons and equipment, a pre-planning mechanic, and more. Of course, that's just the beginning. Once we're in early access, we'll be regularly updating the game with more content, including levels, 
weapons and characters during this process. We'll be talking to and listening closely to you as we proceed through the early access journey together. Your feedback matters and we look forward to collaborating with you. So that seems to be it for their explanation. What are your guys' thoughts? Let me know down below. Because we're going to be moving on to the update or uh, spoiler as they call it. It starts out with every cloud. We know today's news may come as a bit of a disappointment to some. So we're sharing an early look at what we've been working on over the past few months. In the following section, we'll discuss how we've reevaluated the design of our most publicly shown map, Hotel. Our artists have done a stunning job of crafting Hotel into what is today. So we've snuck into the designer's filing cabinet and acquired some insightful design feedback screens. Hotel Atrium Level Design Update is what this picture is called. Let's see. This is the lobby area and I'm assuming this is like the multiplayer version of it? Or maybe they're just adding on to it because it's still under construction maybe? I don't know. It's interesting to say the least. There's a arrow pointing right here that says nav directional sign and storyboard reg signs. Although it's showing squares on nothing it seems like. I'm not really sure what that is but uh, let's see if it explains it underneath here. It says one of our bigger goals within hotel is to improve navigation through the map. One way we can do this is by crafting natural breadcrumbs in the form of subtle signs and maps around the level. These have a compounding effect on improving the atmosphere too. Coupled with the added environmental furniture like construction, safety, signage, scene, and brought to life by telling a story about the past of this room. Okay, interesting. The next picture is called Hotel Cafe looking at reception. Again, it's pointing at something that doesn't seem to be there. I'm assuming they're gonna add things there. The red is just where it's gonna be. So they're pretending that there's an information point here, reception sign, and directional sign. At least that's what I'm assuming. It's not very clear because I'm not seeing anything underneath this stuff. But I definitely think that it's gonna be cool to have signs tell me where to go. Like how I do in real life. Like, you know, I look up to look at a sign at like a grocery store or something. Better to have it on the map than on my HUD, you know. But anyways, here's another example of just how much we can add by evaluating how to improve on the level design. This has a huge impact on immersion in other ways too. We wouldn't need to include UI markers or HUD indicators to direct players through the world. Instead, the focus becomes the world. Directed by the subconscious of the organic methods that we're already trained to do in the real world. Yeah, so... Just what I said. Moving on, the next thing here is Hotel Gym. New cover and collision. They have a picture here. Let's see. So, new full height cover object. Okay. Does that mean that this cover can get destroyed? New soft height cover. Okay, so I'm assuming that this is probably cover that you don't want to get behind, right? Because it says soft, I assume. Like, these must be like boxes or something. You don't want to hide behind boxes because it'll go straight through or something. But uh, let's see what it says underneath. We've also focused on more collision and cover for players. Let's be honest. There's always a bit of extra fun gameplay to be found in cover whether it's sneaking up on suspects or getting ambushed in ready or not we also take into account cover density as well as penetration mechanics through services in this scene you can see how extra value we're going to add to the level design by going through in the second pass lastly we're improving the location of the suspects and civilians in creative ways so that every playthrough is its own challenge yeah so just like i thought i wish that they would have like a freaking thing off to the side here that tells me like what all of these freaking numbers mean i assume they mean like where they can spawn maybe i don't know you know i remember they talked about a map editor a long time ago i wonder if this is like a preview of that but anyways the next one here is called hotel floor one flow map let's take a look at this thing let's take a look at this from the start we got the starting point here this is where you go into the lobby they call this and then here is i'm assuming like some sort of play area i assume they got encounter loop i don't know what any of this stuff means like primary entry points to these specific rooms i'm assuming okay cool encounter loop interesting let's get some information on this it says here's a bird's eye view of one of hotel's floor plans let's break it down further skip over to the next bit if you want to avoid spoilers okay so you guys already came here for the spoiler parts if you actually give a shit about spoilers then you can skip this part i guess i'll have a timestamp if i remember to let's get into it all right spoilers we want players to tackle challenges from different angles that's pretty much been the premise and core of what we want for ready or not however we'd be fools to ignore good design structure for our levels that show the experiences of a player will go through as they traverse this floor to take a high level approach we've broken this floor into three sections Green is for safe and yellow and purple are two different encounter loops that are available each with many different encounters The encounter loops also have primary starting locations that give our art teams better direction with the steps we covered in paragraphs above Interesting. Let's take a better look at this I thought that these were like, you know different parts of the floor, but no these are all specific rooms I assume okay cool underneath it. It says here's a glimpse of how each of the encounters within the loop is broken down to avoid nesting spoilers in Spoilers. Let's just enjoy the image and know 
know that we're working hard on improving the user's experience and design on a gradual level. Oh, they're not going to tell us too much, are they? Oh, I think that's interesting. I, I know that a hotel is going to be a pretty big map. Like, it's not tiny. Uh, I believe this is just the first floor, too. I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure this is just the first floor. And then there's also a second floor. And there might even be a third floor, if I'm not mistaken. With a bunch of cartel guys and white supremacist guys and the civilians stuck in the middle. It's going to be a tough map. I can already tell. I wonder if this is, like, the only toughest map. No, no. This isn't the only tough one, I think. If I remember correctly. But anyways, another spoiler. And for those who aren't into level design, here's a crank off. I think that's how you say that. SBR. It just straight up looks like a freaking uh, AK-74U. I'm really bad with guns. Or maybe that is what it is, and it's just a different name. Or I don't know, freaking... The briefing! We'll be making the most of the extra time, and we'll continue to keep you all in the loop with our bi-weekly community briefings. Thank you all for your patience and understanding with today's news. And that's pretty much the end of this newsletter. I'm not happy, I'll be honest. I think it really sucks that once again we have to sit through another delay from this game. But what are you gonna do? No matter how much I complain, about it won't matter but that's that i suppose so with that being said if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like Raider or not then be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps i'm probably going to activate the join button pretty soon here it tells me that i have to post a video with it so i'm just like oh crap i should have did that with a 10k video whoops oh you live and you learn i suppose but anyways support me when that turns on if you'd like to support the channel in another way check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to to subscribe ding the bell you never know you might find something that you like on the channel i cover a lot of tactical games with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye